Hey, what's up, guys? Hard Lake Joe here with the What A Duck Profile for episode 180, Pure Metaphys. Going over our monster lineup, we're playing two Metaphys Arm Dragon and three each of Metaphys Tyrant Dragon, Metaphys Neftis, Metaphys Daedalus, Aloof Lupine, Metaphys Ragnarok, Honest, and Metaphys Decoy Dragon. For spells, we have one each of Raigeki, Dark Hole, and Gold Sarcophagus, two Pot of Duality, and three each of Asa Metaphys and Metaphys Factor. As for traps, we just have three copies of Metaphys Ascension and three Metaphys Dimension. Our extra deck consists of two Nightmare Phoenix and one each of Angel of Zera, Omega, HTS Simoth, Metaphys Horus, number 38, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, Utopia the Lightning, Regular Utopia, Tornado Dragon, Castell, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Cerberus, and Hip Ho Shinigan. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So this is what I call an advantage deck, which means its win condition is less about reaching a specific board state, and more about just out-resourcing your opponent in general. Metaphys have access to a lot of search and draw power, as well as some pretty devastating removal. Using both together will ensure that you have everything while your opponent has nothing. To understand how this works, you must first understand the Metaphys themselves. There are three key monsters in this archetype, Tyrant Dragon, Neftis, and Daedalus, which all share a common bit of effect text, which states, If this card is banished, during the standby phase of the next turn, shuffle this banished card into the deck and do a thing. In Tyrant Dragon's case, that thing is summon a Metaphys from your hand. Neftis searches any Metaphys card except itself, and Daedalus will banish any Metaphys card from your deck except itself. All of these are useful in ways that you'll see coming up, but Neftis is the most useful because it searches the entire danged archetype. The more you can banish this thing, the better, and fortunately, you have a lot of ways to banish it in this deck. Ace of Metaphys lets you, once per turn, banish a Metaphys from your hands to draw a card. Metaphys Ascension requires you to discard a Metaphys to activate it, but then you draw a card to replace it, and then banish a Metaphys from the deck. Metaphys Ragnarok will banish the top three cards of your deck when it's summoned, and gain 300 for every Metaphys banished that way. And Aloof Lupine lets you banish a monster from your hand when it's summoned, in order to banish another monster from your deck of the same type. All the Metaphys are light worms, so whether you have Neftis in your hand or in your deck, the Doggo has access to it. Now what's cool is in pretty much all these cases, you're banishing in order to gain some other effect. A lot of times you're drawing cards, which means Neftis is just free advantage on top of what you're already doing. You do have to wait until your next standby phase to get the search, but it only takes one or two searches to get you rolling. And if you could survive that long, you can usually get to a point where you're banishing this thing every single turn, which snowballs into massive advantage that your opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with. Speaking of your opponent not being able to deal with things, we have the field spell, which, among other things, says your opponent can't activate effects in response to your Metaphys monster effects. So if you have this, your opponent literally won't be able to deal with your monsters, because they can't negate their effects, or activate things like Ash Blossom in response to your searches. Now this is not a necessary starter card, which is why we're not playing Terraforming or anything, but if you've already got eight Symmetophys for draws and like a level 4 monster you can summon, then this is something you're going to want to search with Neftis to just make it more difficult for your opponent to deal with you. Another good card to grief your opponent with is the Continuous Trap Metaphys Dimension, which, among other things, says once per turn, if another Metaphys card is banished, you can target one of your opponent's cards and banish it. Again, this can be kind of mediocre first turn, but because it's continuous, it stays on the field. If you get to the point where you're banishing every turn during both players' turns, then your opponent is going to be in for a bit of trouble. Now, the only other big advantage gaining card that you might want to search is Metaphys Ascension. In addition to its activated effect that I mentioned earlier, where you banish from the deck and draw, if it's banished itself, you can immediately search one Metaphys card, which is super useful if you just need something right now to make a play, rather than waiting for the next standby phase. If you banish this with Ace of Metaphys, it's essentially engaged, just getting you a draw on a free search. And if you have Metaphys Dimension out while you do it, then you're also banishing something your opponent controls as well. 
So that's how you gain extra cards, but how do you make your opponent lose cards? Well, aside from the continuous trap I just mentioned, all of our big metaphys have secondary effects that activate when they're summoned by the effect of a metaphys monster. Tyrant Dragon is unaffected by traps and can attack again if it destroys a monster. Neftis banishes all set spell traps on the field. And Big Dick Daedalus over here banishes all special summoned monsters on the field. That in particular can be absolutely devastating to your opponent, especially if they have like six monsters and you have the field spell saying they can't activate anything in response to it. As for how to summon Daedalus, there's three ways. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you banish Tyrant Dragon, its effect will special summon any Metaphys out of your hand, including Daedalus, during the next standby phase. Uh, we've also got Metaphys Decoy Dragon, which has the effect that when your monster is targeted for an attack, you can banish Decoy, then special summon another Metaphys that is banished or in your graveyard. Finally, there's my favorite, Metaphys Ragnarok, who in addition to milling and gaining attack like I mentioned before, summons a Metaphys from the deck whenever it deals battle damage. Ragnarok is the main reason that I play Honest. I mean, you can use Honest with any of the Metaphys, they're all light, but if you have Ragnarok, you can guarantee battle damage against any monster, letting you summon Daedalus in the battle phase to banish everything your opponent has before attacking for 2600. And that's pretty much the main crux of the deck. You search a whole bunch, draw a whole bunch, keep banishing stuff with a trap, and occasionally just wipe your opponent's entire board in the battle phase. Everything else in here is just kind of a tech card that can be replaced at your leisure. I still play two of the Metaphys normal monster just because it can be used as fodder for all the things that require you to discard or banish a Metaphys. Uh, some people don't like it since it can brick at times, but I find it's better to have two extra names in the deck just to trigger your effects. Dark Hole and Raigeki are here to just bait out negations and or clear the field so Ragnarok can attack. This is kind of a go second deck, so it's nice to have something you can activate and just instantly make your opponent waste whatever negation they have. Uh, Gold Sark is obvious, it banishes everything, get your plays started. If it ever comes back to two or three, play max copies of this in the deck. Uh, Pot of Duality I went with, since it can let you grab the one spell trap you're missing. And we rarely special summon during our turn, unless we're going for game with Ragnarok. You could just as easily replace this with Pot of Extravagance if you want to, since we barely use the extra deck. But I thought I'd try to make this deck a little bit more on the budget side this time, for those people who want to play Metaphys in real life. Speaking of the extra deck, feel free to run pretty much whatever you want in here. Uh, Ragnarok is a level 4 tuner, which gives you access to quite a few things. You can make level 8 synchros, rank 4 Ixies, and of course a whole bunch of Link 2s, so you got quite a few options including some high-level Ixies if you want to make use of your high-level monsters. As for the rest of the side deck, my biggest recommendations in here are Macro Cosmos and Defissure. These are both great floodgates that will not only hurt your opponent, but actively help you as well. Uh, there's pretty much no reason not to play these if you're playing the deck. The only reason I'm not playing them is because I'm recording this deck for the What A Deck show, and that show is really boring when I just flip Macro Cosmos and my opponent surrenders because I shut down their entire strategy. I tend to stick away from floodgates, but if you're playing this in real life, by all means. Uh, other recommendations in here, Battle Fader, can actually help you survive the one or two turns you need to get your plays started. And Necroface, who is really good for kickstarting the deck, assuming you have some way to banish it. Uh, if you're playing either of these two, or if Gold Sark ever comes off the list, definitely include Necroface as well. Just didn't really work with the build I have going here. Uh, the rest of the cards in here are just some other options. Crossbreed lets you banish two Metaphys from your hand to add one from your deck, which is really good, but only if you open with it and two other Metaphys. Uh, any other time, it can kind of be a brick, which makes it risky to run, especially in a deck already full of a bunch of high-level monsters that's prone to bricking. There's also Monster Reborn Reborn, which targets three monsters in your graveyard, has your opponent choose one to summon, and how the other two are banished. Uh, in my build, you can often go a whole game without ever getting monsters in the grave, so this wasn't really worth it on its own. But it has a lot of potential when paired with Waterfall of Dragon Souls, which lets you either search any Metaphys, or dump any number of Metaphys from your hand to the graveyard to draw that many cards plus one. 
It's a bit slow, but this deck is already kind of slow, so who knows, maybe try experimenting with these two. It feels like together you could make some really awesome plays. And that's pretty much the deck. I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to see Pure Metaphys in action, you could check out the main video there. I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro. Or if you're short on time, just check out the replay video. Both should be on the end card and linked down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs>